p.m. 590. Uh, 10 p.m. Uh, a vessel Hawaii. Uh, we may be about 100,000 metric ton from Azerbaijan. Uh, we sent it to the parliament this day of 20th December 2023 Committee on Energy by Ms. Anjel Joroge I. I am Anjel Joroge, a Kenyan a trader in oil and gas product, having stated, started the business in year 2009 and worked to build network and business links with the refineries and oil allocations holds in the Middle East and Asia. Point of order, Chair. Yes, please. I don't know whether uh, Anne can, instead of reading the entire document, she can summarize the story. Because she knows what we are talking about. We've already presented the question. So I don't know whether it's possible for her to go straight to the point. My thinking is that uh, since um, she has not exhausted the 15 minutes, it is a uh, right Chair. to present the matter as she wishes, that it is that it is going to do her uh, justice. Much of light, Chair. <laughs> yes, please. Chair. And uh, it is not a lot because I looked at uh, the statement. It is just two pages. Um, and she's comfortable reading it, and we have the 15 minutes. Uh, please, okay. I'm requesting that we just give her the time to, to prosecute. It is just two pages. Fully guided. Fully guided. Please. Okay. Unless herself she changes mind. But you have uh, the freedom either to read it or summarize it in your own words, but it's up to you to choose. Proceed. I prefer to read. Okay. Shall I continue? From yes, please. Point? Proceed. Okay. Oil allocation holders in the Middle East and Asia. I set up my base in Dubai, UAE, to run a business of moving petroleum products to African countries under the company Ants Import and Export Enterprise Limited. I also learned a mineral trading company uh, called ICAD General Trading, LLC, Dubai. In regard to MT Hagui, which was loaded with 100,000 metric ton products EN 590, 10 ppm, I submit that I purchased the fuel using credit line held in HSBC Bank in Dubai, together with a business partner, we have an account in the bank, which we settle uh, payments for products we have been allocated. The cargo on MT Hagui was paid from this bank, just like all other petroleum transactions we have executed over the years. The product was indicated as heading to the port of Mombasa of the Bill of Reading. The bill is a document which can be amended to the buyer's name once commercial discuss discussions has taken place, have taken place and concluded. This means that if we got a customer in Tanzania, we would ask the shipping agency to generate a new customer custom bill of reading, which reflected the buyer's final port of discharge. Our business model is such that sometimes a product is loaded on ship from a storage location or a refinery, and at that point, we may not have a concluded commercial with a buyer to, eat, to ease space in storage facilities 
we have to road vessel to sail off while trade consultations are going on. It is worthy nothing that there is a big volume of petroleum in tankers on the sea than on the road, owing to traders moving commodity from storage to vessels. In this case, we pick port name to be indicated on the BL and initial paperwork stage so that we would effect alterations with the shipping agencies to reflect the buyer's chosen port of discharge. When the product has been bought, we have attached our tanker bill of reading to reference for for reference empty highway. The vessel departed to the port of Jeddah 29 September 2023, loaded with 100,000 metric tons of EN 590 10 ppm. The vessel arrived on Kenya on the Kenya waters on 11th October. 2023, indicated in the attached cargo manifest and Q88, the shipping company which managed this delivery, uh, Nora Tanker Limited, registered in Malta under registration number C55835. Q88 cargo manifest are here attached for further reference. The products. The cargo on board MT Hagui was refined by LC Alpha AAA, which stored and sold from the Republic of Kazakhstan as indicated by the certificate of origin number K30006 KE. The consignee is ANS Import and Export. Enterprise Limited, which pro procured the product from exporter name SC Usiku, based in the Republic of Kazakhstan. The product was inspected for quality and confirm confirmance and uh, issued with the certificates of quality and quantity number 09551-00952-23 in Jida on 29th September 2023. We have attached proof of product, POP into brackets, documentation for further reference. The incident, upon arrival of the vessel in our high sea waters, I traveled to Mombasa, to market the fuel to, poten to potential buyers in East Africa, as I had many inquiries from Kenya traders who export petroleum products to neighboring countries. I contacted buyers in Tanzania, Congo, South Sudan, for my business as a trader. With the strength that the cargo was already within East African waters and therefore within proximity to the large region, region, region market. However, while still carrying out negotiations with the potential buyers on 4th of November, I was surprised to be informed by the refinery that MT Hagui had been called to the port and was already an, on the Rikoni River heading to bath at Kipefu Terminal. Upon receiving this information, I went to Port Police to try and stop the fuel from being discharged. I got an OB report for this incident. While seeking for help, 
I sought to see CS for energy and petroleum. Mr. David Churchill. I am employed him to assist me with the matter, asking him to intervene as the field has not procured under the G2G framework. The CS insisted that he had been advised by his staff that the field belonged to Garana Energies and that it had been procured by Saud Aramco under government to government arrangement. I decided to report the matter to the DCI. I presented myself before director, Mr. Amin, who was gracious to me, listened to the ordeal. I underwent before asking me to report to the director of investigation bureau to record my statement. Upon finishing recording my statement at Mr. Birej's office, <clears throat> I was not let to go, but was instead handed over to two individuals who transported me to a holding facility on the night of 9th November 2023. I was released from the facility on that 10th of November, having spent four gruesome days where I was interrogated, asked to withdraw court cases. Uh, my lawyer had filled in the court while I was in while, while, while I was in still held by the DCI. For the record, I was not informed why I had been arrested and held captive for all those days. And to date, I have not been charged with any criminal as I had gone to the DCI to seek help and record a statement on my cargo, which by then had started discharging, despite a court order, which we had sought restrain KPA and KPC from discharging. Conclusion. I, it is my humble submission that I pro procured this fuel for the sale into my country in East Africa as upstream trader into blanket, not an importer Okay, sorry. Not an import of petroleum product in Kenya. I do not need license to deliver fuel CIF to a customer who has a license to operate in their jurisdiction. Juris, juris, I amend the import documentation to the buyer and deliver the product to final port. I do not run business in the downstream or fuel import space in Kenya as I am not licensed. Number two, if empty Hagui belong to G2G, why would it remain in the waters from 11th October 2023 till the 4th November 2023. Previous G2G shipment 
can improve the run allowed times for such procurements and it will be misleading to try and sink in the private procurement into this framework. I submit that our vessel was forcefully taken into the port of Mombasa, illegally discharged by actors who thought that they will match power and influence and would engage in irregularity like one with no cons consequences. Three, we sought help of component court of law, but the orders we ignored the, the orders we ignored by KPA, which in my view undermined the rule, the rule of law had proceeded to discharge fear belonging to a Kenyan trader. I have subjected much uh, the Dukera as a resort with a concentrated orchestrated of this crime, believing that no action will be taken against them. This committee must look into contempt of court orders, how it caused significant financial loss by innocent Kenyans like myself. Number four, I was arrested and detained illegally because of fighting for what is rightfully mine. The proprietors who stole my fuel forced my detention by police in order to discharge and sell my cargo. I requested this committee to help me get justice in this matter, seeing that court was disobeyed and security uh, apparatus used to illegal arrest and detain me. Number five, I seek to be fully compensated for loss of my product, which was illegally taken possession by Garana Energies. I believe investigation of this matter with the view of helping me in my fight for compensation and the recovery of all payment due to me.